जय श्री मंगलम जय श्री मंगलम जय श्री मंगलम आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू माय स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर श्री मचालक गुरु सदाशिवम आचार्य जी महाराज आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू लॉर्ड श्री रामानुज आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू माय लक्ष्मी आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू लॉर्ड श्री मनारायण आई पे माय ओबेसेंसेस टू द पूर्व आचार्य Ape obeisances to the Frau Alvaz of the Sri Sampradaya and Ape obeisances and I welcome Lord Ram to the second day of his celebrations in Ram Nomi here at the Sri Narayan Dam in Durban, South Africa. I welcome those that are present here physically in the satsang and I welcome those that are watching this discourse on live feed locally nationally and internationally and I welcome those that are going to be watching this discourse on the various groups that will be posted subsequently as you can see Vishwadas, I'm filming my own discourse because my technicians cannot be available to this threat of coronavirus. So this will be our last public satsang, but I will continue throughout the Ram Nomi and on our normal discourse. Sundays until the lockdown is unblocked. Okay. So we stated that, that there are various reasons that the Lord comes down or the Lord descends, and two of the most important reasons are those to establish dharma, which is righteous living righteous principles and to remove our dharma which is unrighteous principles and it was on this excuse that Lord Sriman Narayan entered the material atmosphere of the Asuras. So on one side man is impelled by the Asuras and the and on the other side, mind of man is impelled by the devis and, and righteous conduct. You get the asuras who take great pleasure in the unrighteous living. The asuras take great pleasure in the unrighteous living whereas the devas take great pleasure in righteous living. So when Ramayana is Valmiki, the source of the Ramayana is Valmiki, there are many other posts that have written the Ramayana. They are all authorized, it is their love for how they see and how they feel about Lord Ram. If there is a million versions of the Ramayana, it does not mean, it does not mean that the original Ramayana is compromised. All of you understand? The Ramayana of Valmiki is the origin of the happenings that took place during Lord Ram's lifetime. Then you get the Ram Charit Manas and you get many other versions of the Ramayana. These other versions do not compromise the original Ramayana of Val. 
So as I mentioned in the past six years, I'm not a story teller guru. I'm not here to give you the story form of the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. I am here to give you the absolute science behind the story. And the Supreme Lord, the absolute scientist, we want to confirm that in Sanatan Dharma, we are not involved in religion. Sanatan Dharma does not mean a particular religion. Sanatan Dharma means absolute science. And God is the absolute scientist. He is the source of all sciences. And in this Kalyug, in this Kalyug, the 28th Kalyug in this cycle of creation, Lord Sri Ramanuj, is the supreme scientist. And currently in this Kalyu, in this 21st century, my guru, Swami Sudarshan Acharya is the practicing scientist of this 21st century. And I sit here today as an insignificant atom at the lotus feet of my Guru, Swami Sudarshan Acharya Maharaj, and at the lotus feet of the Sri Sampada. So the science behind Lord Ram and Valmiki's Ramayana is that principles as set out in Vedanta. Vedanta means end of knowledge. And end of knowledge would mean that you have attained all spiritual knowledge in human form. And the authorized scripture in Vedanta is the Brahma Sutras, the Bhagavad Gita and the four Vedas, which includes the Upanishads. And we stated, supplementary to these authorized scriptures is the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. And we also stated that most recently Lord Sriman Narayan was on this planet Earth just over 5,000 years ago. So we take the Bhagavad Gita, we take the Brahma Sutras, and we will take the Upanishads, and we will show that the Ramayan of Valmiki is authorized Vedanta scripture. So the Ramayan is not a mythology as people believe or were made to believe around the world. Definition of a mythology, Sita. It's not a made up story. And I've expressed previously and I'm expressing now again that although it is not necessary for modern science to corroborate supreme science, it is the human materialistic conditioned mind is fashioned such. NASA has confirmed the bridge and people that dive in the ocean and do research, they have confirmed that the stones found at the bottom of the seabed to the sea. And in the Ramayana, it has been that the stones were brought from another location. Now, all these are not evidence. So the Ramayan is absolute. It is what we call in law, Jessica, decided cases. 
So you have a law, and then you have a decided case, and in order to make a proper good system, you follow in. But in the Sri Sampradaya, and especially here at the Sri Narayan Dham, it is the job to bring the spiritual, the law of spiritual science into its perspective. So I am bringing the law of spiritual science in its perspective, and I'm confirming that Valmiki's Ramayana is authorized part of the Vedas. And we will do this by cross-referencing. So in the Bhagavad Gita, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Sri Krishna states that the best yogin was king Janak. The best karma yogin was king Janak. In the Bhagavad Gita, and Bhagavad Gita is spoken directly by the Supreme Lord, Lord Sriman Narayan himself. King is this I'm telling you, Jessica. that King Janaka was alive during the Ramayana. And he is the best, he is the best of being a karma. Lord Sri is describing this five years ago, and the Ramayana happened next avatar as Lord Sri Krishna. So the cow herds were okay. I think this is the problem we're going to have continuously, but we're going to so we have shown that the Ramayana has been connected to the Bhagavad Gita, it has been connected to the Brahma Sutra, and it has been connected to the Brihat Aryanaka Upanishad. Brihat Aryanaka Upanishad. Alright? So we've shown the connection of the Ramayana in three authorized scriptures. So Lord Ram, on the day of his coronation as king, was asked to go into exile for 14 years. We stated yesterday that King Dasra had how many wives? Three wives, four children. Ram, Lakshman, Bharat, and Chatragun. They were twins from Sumitra, KK, Bharat was born of KK and Ram was born of Kaushalya. Okay. King Dasra was urgently requiring, he had a bad dream, he had bad feelings, and he wanted for Lord Ram to take the throne in his lifetime. And he sped up the coronation so that he could coronate Lord Ram as king. What was the reason for Lord Ram to descend to earth? Uh, I said this yesterday, Dana. Ravna was, Ravna had become uncontrollable and all the devis and devtas went up to Lord Brahma 
and complained to him. And Lord Narayan stated that I will take my birth as four sons of King Dust. So Lord Ram was now married for how many years before he was exiled? Twelve years, him and Mother Sita lived in the palace of his dad. And if he continued living in the palace of his dad, and he continued being a king. Would his purpose for his birth be served? No. Because the purpose of his birth was to annihilate Ram. So, the mother of Bharat was KK, and she had a servant called Mantara, who was a hunchback maid. Okay. KK took Lord Ram as her own son. There was a hundred percent mother-son relationship between Lord Ram and K. K. Mantara convinced KK to have Bharat instilled as the king. And I want you to, I'm just going to give you this part because I want to stop this discourse. People need to go home before. People need to go home quickly or else they'll be imprisoned for attending a satsang. Okay? So when Mantara initiated this idea, and I want you to understand why I chose this part of the topic for my discourse today. When Mantara initiated this idea initially to KK, she refused and continued refusing until she convinced her that if Bharat was not instilled as the king, then Bharat would become the enemy of Lord Ram. And she would become the enemy of Kaushali. And this seed of evil, and this is how convincing evil people are, because in conniving and convincing, they also use part of the truth. Evil people know how to manipulate the absolute truth, but to an evil result. Okay. So there was a time when King Janaka, even before that, when King Janaka asked KK's father, for the hand in marriage of KK, there was a promise made. And the reason King Janaka asked for a third wife, because he two other wives could not conceive a child. And so he went looking for a third wife and the understanding was that when he gets this third wife, KK, then the son of KK must be the king. However, none of these three wives could bear a child. Okay? Then, when King Janaka 
in those days, kings weren't like presidents, sitting in the office and sending their generals to fight. Kings led the fights themselves. They fought in the battles themselves. And when King Janaka was injured so badly that he almost died, KK was at this war zone with him and she nursed him back to life. And when she was nursed back to life, he gave her two boons. At that point in time, she was a pure wife and she was not concerned with the two boons. You know what boons are? You can make two requests. She was not interested in the request. She was a pure wife. She was more interested in the recovery of her husband. Now let's look at Mantara. Let's look at Mantara. Remember Mantara is the most hated character in the Ramayana. And this story, you hearing for the first time, most of you, in India they hear it from the age of three and four. So in India, Mantara is well known and most hated. Because she broke an absolute divine family and she split that. She is responsible for splitting that Okay. So she convinced KK that KK was not wrong because firstly this was an agreement between King Janaka and KK's father that her child will be king so she was not wrong she is not wrong and secondly he had given her two boons and now was the time for her to put her boons in action. And one boon would be to make Bharat the king and the second boon would be to send Lord Ram into exile for 14 years. So you can see how the evil dormer makes. Okay. So look at this per perfect family. Then also look at the reason why Lord Ram took his birth. And then look at what quality of person that changes the game. So is it absolutely necessary in the material universe to have Asuras and Rakshas? Yes, it is absolutely necessary because if Mantara did not change the game, then Lord Ram's appearance in this world would have been defeated. And I've stated for many years now that all the demonic people, all the asuras that have come to our satsang, the only thing they did, the end result, was they uplifted us to a higher position. In my past six years, for the past four years, We've been fighting various battles, Jessica. And the only thing that these battles did was make us grow spiritually and make us reach a higher divine consciousness. Our own people, divine people, cannot make you more divine. Your stepping stone to divinity is the demonic. So whenever you come across people that trying that is trying to bring you down, there'll always be 
for every one person that wants to take you up, nine that wants to bring you down. These people are in effect helping you on your way up. These people are in effect helping you on your way up. Don't worry how difficult it can be. And don't worry how they can manipulate the absolute truth. Because they have been put there by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And these people change your F-A-T-E. Don't they? And when they change your F-A-T-E, you must use these people to have F a i t h you must use now this impelling of the demonic who is changing your faith f a t e and you must instill in you f a i t h so that you can use this human body for the purpose it was given to you. And the purpose this human body was awarded to you to evolve through F-A-I-T-H to meet your maker. All of you understand? Then, Lord Ram, I think this is the first time he's down in a hundred years, after a hundred years, every hundred years there's a pandemic. 1720, 1820, 1920, and now is 2020. Every hundred years there is a pandemic. And this is a time people won't be worrying Lord Ram. Because everyone is hiding from the virus. This is a time you should really be worrying Lord Ram from home. Instead of meeting him in satsang, let him enter your houses. Let him enter your home. Call in. There's a lockdown outside. There never was a lockdown inside. And Lord Ram is inside. He was outside. So use the outside lockdown to make him enter your inside. And once again, I like I'm a guru in South Africa. My priority is initially in the country that I live in. South Africa will be starting its lockdown at 10. He showed me a video of a very impatient lady outside a butcher shop. Okay. Please, our request to you is please be patient. Do not panic. Do not panic. The country has taken adequate measures to make sure that there is adequate food and all the essential services are open. You do not have to buy the entire supermarket don't have to buy all the bread. And I was informed this evening that there will be no sale of cigarettes and alcohol. So I'm asking all the smokers, drug addicts, alcoholics, use this 21 days as a rehab. Because my very own son made the entire world go into rehabilitation Jessica, when he went into rehab. Okay, I was on the phone with him yesterday. And I 
Mr. Chirwin, why are you so selfish? You went into rehab and you're making the entire world now go into rehab and get locked down with you. Okay? So, use. Use this three weeks for inner cleansing. Let coronavirus as mantara, as mantara, she wanted an evil outcome. Similarly, coronavirus wants an evil outcome. Use this coronavirus and become a perfect human being. Start going inside both individually and as a family, because this is a family lockdown. Play games with the family. Each of you write down how many wrongs you commit and hand it to your family. It's a game, it's a time for absolute truth. Be truthful and tell your partners, your husbands, your wives, your children, your family members, your parents, how wrong you are, not how right you are. Because the greatest catastrophe in humankind is we want to prove how right we are. We never want to change how wrong we are. So use this three weeks. Jessica, I think you've got a lot of writing to do for satisfied. Huh? Doesn't matter, you can still write to him and tell him how wrong you've been over all these years. All right? When you go to the supermarket, Satish Bhai, buy those thick hardcover books, the entire pack. It might not be in <laughs> And we want it in handwriting, so there is evidence. Hard copy, yes. Okay? So, jokes aside, Use this time to cleanse. Become better humans. Because look, one invisible virus, it started with one. It has rocked the world. It has rocked the world. And all the time we thought we were great. Now we are in hiding. Now we are in hiding from an invisible virus because man is used to change the natural order of things. We cut down forests. We do everything wrong. But today, an invisible virus has brought the greatest. Today we're living in modern times. We have the greatest scientists, NASA. We have everything at our fingertips. But one invisible virus has shaken the core of mankind. So man is not great any more. Greatness only belongs to the Supreme Lord. And let that greatness stay. Are there any questions? Are there any questions?